everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and today we're working on Notre V, and we are on page one right now, page one. So page one's gonna have two flaps and a pocket, and I'll go over those measurements with you really quick. Um, the way I'm positioning the flaps is the larger flap is gonna go to the right, the smaller to the left, and this flap is four and a half, four and a half by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the four and a half inch side. <coughs> And this is the pocket page, so the pockets are to the left and right. We're going to install these flaps and then we'll add our pocket. Okay, there we go. And this is the designer paper that's going to go on top, but before we do that, let's go ahead and add our uh, right hand flap, and this is a five by eight, five by eight, score a half inch on the five inch side. So you're going to have a little bit of an overlap between these two flaps. Okay, in just a moment. Okay, so the last piece um, is going to be a pocket that's going to go in the inside. And it's going to go uh, on the base and sorry about that the air just came on i'm going to check to make sure my my flaps won't close so i'm going to need to make my pocket a little bit smaller so this is nine by three and a half and what i'm going to recommend is maybe eight and seven eighths by three and a half so i'm going to modify that to eight and seven eighths by three and a half and then it should fit well within uh, both of these uh, score lines. As, as you can see right now, it, at a full nine inches, it's just too much. So there's two ways to solve that. Um, either make the pocket smaller or add an additional score line. And I think I'm just gonna make my pocket smaller. Okay, so that's uh, it. I'm gonna have to make my remake my pocket. I'll be right back. The banner is going to have the adjusted size. Okay, I retrimmed and it's going to work out perfect. So this is going to be eight and seven eighths by three and a half. And you're going to place it in your scoreboard, score half inch, half inch, rotate it one more time and a half inch. And as you can see, it's going to fit right between these two flaps. So I'm just going to miter my corners, get my tape on, and we'll go ahead and install this. So nine and seven eighths by three and a half, miter your corners. And then um, I like to fold in the two sides and then the bottom piece because as you're slipping things into the pocket, <clears throat> it's gonna follow that side and it's gonna be less likely to get hung up on the bottom flange. Okay, let's get some tape on it. <clears throat> and because I like to do it that way, I take my sides first holding the bottom flange in place, and then I add the tape to the bottom last. <clears throat> and I don't, oh, I very rarely do this on screen anymore. I try to have most of this done before I sit down. Adjustments have to be made. So this is what I call a tape tear tool. We sell these in our shop, it's something sort of created out of necessity. It's a two by two inch square acrylic um, with a little handle on it, which keeps me from losing it amongst my papers. <clears throat> we sell this fluorescent green or yellow, and then we also sell a clear one. And uh, I have both. Um, originally, it only came in clear, but I like the bright. It's easier to locate visually. <clears throat> when I'm working. So if you want one, check it out in our store. Okay, so let's go ahead and use, and this is a Silhouette Pick tool. Um, anybody who has an electronic cutting machine, Cricut, Silhouette, all of those, um, have um, what are called weeding tools. That's what this is. I call it a pick tool. <clears throat> and any of those work, but if you don't have one, we also sell this in our shop. <clears throat> and I find it necessary because I can't 
it's already grabbed before I was ready. There we go. <clears throat> I can't lift the tape off with my finger fingernails. It just never works, so I get frustrated with that. So I'm going to center it. You're going to have a little gap on either side, and that's going to allow your flaps to close easily, like so. Okay, now set aside my scoreboard. Let's go ahead and start decorating. So this is going to go on the larger side. Hmm, I left my glue open last night. I just had to check and make sure I was rolling, and we are. So I hate to say this, but I mixed all my papers up last night. So Chow Bella has a collection pack and a patterns pack, and I'm using both. And because I mixed them up, and they don't have a header on them like Graphic 45s do, I don't know which pack this is from, but I can tell you it's from one of the 12 by 12 packs. So it's either the collection pack or the patterns pack. And then um, I'm also going to use um, papers from the 8x8 collection pack. And those are a little easier for me to tell because the scale is different. And so actually in this um, on this page, I'm going to use papers from 12 by 12 patterns, and or one of the two of those, and an 8x8. So this is from one of the two 12 by 12 collection packs, and I think it's from, uh, I think this is from the collection pack. <clears throat> and it's actually one sheet, and I just cut it apart. So it goes like that. <clears throat> And if I turned this the other way around, I could have continued the pattern, but I didn't, partly because I wanted um, to highlight the uh, Eiffel Tower here. So, Okay, again, we're on page one. I use mahogany powder puff to ink my edges. And I think it makes it pop against the cream cardstock. And the cardstock I'm using, which we sell in our shop now because I know some people are having a hard time finding it, is um, Astro Brights. And it's called Cream. Um, we do sell it in our shop, but you can also find it at Walmart. Although I have to say, lately, I'm having trouble finding it there. It's, I think, one of those things where supply is difficult to locate now. Okay, so the centerpiece here is going to come from the 12 by 12 or 8 by 8 collection pack. Okay, so that, that's going to go right here, and it's got a nice pocket in it. I'm going to dry fit this real quick. And I think it looks good. I want to make sure it's not going to get hung up on my flats. It looks good. Okay. I like this continuous pattern. I think it's fun when you take your inserts out and then you have a, you know, a pattern, a picture, basically. Let's come up just a little more on this side. And a little lower here. Hopefully you're not getting too much in my head, but okay. So that's that. And then this is a little oversized, so I'm going to trim it because I want this as much as possible to be a continuous pattern. So I'm not going to tuck very much of this, if any, into the pocket. So you get the pattern. So let's take a look. I'm going to try it, but oh, you know what? It won't fit into the pocket because I made the pocket a little smaller. I trimmed these papers last night. Okay, that, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, I think I just need to check that one more time. So it's going to need to be trimmed a little bit on this side. And I want to trim off the top because you want to have that continuous pattern. Let's see how we do. I like it. Let's get some ink on it and put it down.
There we go. And then we are going to have some inserts in here. And there's all kinds of, I'm going to use the A4 too. And the A4 has all kinds of cut aparts that are going to be beautiful to use as embellishments and as um, inserts for your pockets. Okay, so that's it for now. I haven't picked the two side papers because I'm still, oh, you know what I forgot? And you guys know what I forgot too. So I didn't put a magnet in here. <gasps> Hmm. I still think we can solve that problem, but we'll see. How much of an overlap do I have? Nope, I don't have enough. So I have to figure out a way to get this closed. And I'll probably use some sort of an embellishment um, on one side or the other. So what do I mean by that? Uh, an easy way to hide a magnet. I was so excited about getting my pocket covered. I, I sort of lost my mind. <laughs> is we could use this little piece right here. I can place a magnet behind it and then another magnet on this side. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna draw a circle on both sides until I decide which side I'm gonna put the magnet on. And before we cover these two sides, I will have that figured out. And it may mean, like I said, adding an embellishment, which I was planning on doing anyways. I just wasn't planning on putting it um, I was, I was, plan never mind, I didn't make a mistake. I was planning on using that. I just don't know what it's going to be yet. So it could be even this, which kind of goes with this. So we'll see. Um, I've got a couple of these um, cut out and ready to use, uh, and others I still have to paper back. So we will figure that out after I pick my two side panels. So I'll be back soon with that. <laughs> everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and I'm ready to finish uh, page one. So I've got our uh, papers chosen, and so what I'm going to put on the left and right panels are from the A4 pack, the A4 pack, and it just worked out perfect that um, I trimmed it uh, to fit these, and that was exactly the right um, measurement to get these two panels covered without any scrap, which was kind of nice. So one of the uh, panels is a little bit larger than the other. And then I went ahead and put these two cut aparts in the pocket. I may cardstock back them, I haven't decided, uh, but I want to leave them in there because I'm probably gonna add some other things as well. Uh, some other inserts. Oh, I gotta wait. Sorry, we gotta put our our magnet on first. I forgot about that. So this is a cut apart, and um, I'm going to place it here somewhere, and we're gonna place a magnet behind it, and then on the inside panel here. And I almost forgot to do that. So we're gonna mark our edges real quick. I wanna leave my Eiffel Tower exposed. I think this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to draw my corner here, and then I'm going to flip it end over end, place the corner back there again, and then we're going to mark, you know, where the glue is going to go, right there. Okay. I was just looking to see if it has an orientation. There's some words written back here. It's very faint, but the button does go uh, in the upper left-hand corner. Okay, where did, here's my little corner mark. Place that there, and then I'm gonna use my ruler and just see if I've got a straight line. Just by running it up and down, I can see it's pretty straight. Yep, it's not drifting up or down. Finish gluing that into place. Okay, now we are gonna add a magnet here. It's a good thing I opened it and looked at that, huh? And then we're gonna use our 5 8 inch tape. right here and then that is going to need to be about right there 
So this is always a little bit harder than having the magnet on the top side. So I think I'm actually going to wind up placing that someplace, moving that. Let's see. So that should work, okay. There we go. Easy peasy. Okay, now I can place this. Try to operate quickly before my glue dries completely. Now I need to cover the back of this, and I'm going to take a second to find something. Be right back. Okay, um, I just found a little scrap of what I used on both of the flaps, and we're going to cover the back of that little tag that we installed to hide the magnet. right side up <laughs> and stick my head over it to get a better look okay just making sure that it's all the way around the magnet there okay that's the end of shoot what page are we on page one <laughs> so again I've got some inserts that are going to go in here and these are just all cut apart from the various collections so there's lots of goodies that you can use uh, to, to stuff your pockets okay so it's going to close like that okay that's it for page one.